we move on to motion number 7.5 which is in the name of assembly member shan barry please proceed thank you thank you very much chair um and i'm very pleased to move uh, this motion and today i thank assembly member pigeon for seconding it with me we've heard this morning and not for the first time how many people have had their lives truly shattered by the coronavirus pandemic it's infiltrated every aspect of our city, our healthcare system, food security, jobs and livelihoods and the futures our young people can look forward to. For many of our <clears> citizens, anxiety is part of their daily lives now. People are worried they might be made redundant, worried for their loved ones, worried about paying the bills when they're receiving a fraction of their normal wage and struggling to make ends meet. Worrying where on earth they might find their next job and whether they might fall through the gaps in our current systems of welfare and support. This morning I outlined the horrible situation faced by so many of London's young people and we know there's so many more people of all ages struggling. Claims for job seekers allowance and universal credit have increased by 165% since March. It's easy to get overwhelmed by big numbers and details, so pervasive is the uncertainty and impact of our overlapping crises. But it's clear that now is the time for big ideas. This motion is simple in its actions. There are just two bullet points. Vote for this and we'll ask the mayor to lobby the government to trial a universal basic income in London and work with our local councils to help do this. This is something many councils across the country are already resolving to do. Local authorities of different strikes have called to be the pilot areas in our country for this idea whose time has come. Let's join York, which is jointly run by Lib Dems and Greens, and let's join Labour-run councils in Liverpool, Sheffield, Hull, Leeds, Norwich, and the Senate in Wales too, and ask that our citizens are among the first to receive UBI. There are so many potential benefits of universal basic income and so much evidence, including the final decisive results of the finished trial, that people have better well-being, outcomes, and prospects when they have this small amount of unconditional security. This motion specifically asks for us to show our support for an evaluated basic income pilot to be in London. These times demand leadership and I can't think of a better time or place to trial a basic income than here and now. Colleagues, we should not delay or wait before we ask it to be trialled in our cities. So I urge all Assembly members to vote for this motion and for the simple thing it asks the mayor to do, instead of pushing our considerations down the line. When I asked the mayor about this last, he said it's worth exploring the idea, and he highlighted the potential benefits, particularly to women. In July, I spoke at the UBI London launch with Fleur Anderson, MP for Labour, and Marisha Ray for the Lib Dems. And in August, I helped launch UBI Youth with Jack Sargent from Labour in the Welsh Senate. Since then, Campaigns are growing fast and spreading the word, and opinion polls show more and more people across the country are backing the idea of a universal basic income too. And then last week, 520 elected representatives from different parties from every part of the UK wrote to the Chancellor asking him to support pilots of universal basic income in England, Wales, Scotland and Northern Ireland. Please, let's join them and make our request to try it here as soon as we can. Cross party, let's lead the way. Please vote for this motion today. Uh, right. I have uh, Assem Assembly Member Caroline Pigeon to second this, please. Thank you very much, Chair, and I'm delighted to second this motion today. And I'd like to thank Assembly Member Berry and her group for bringing this forward today. Um, as this motion says at the very beginning, financial security is essential to a thriving and stable society. We have seen very clearly in recent months how fragile many people's financial circumstances are, especially here in London, where even before the COVID crisis, close to a third of people lived in poverty. And what we see with COVID is the particularly devastating impact of the crisis on lower income households with the economic support measures put in place so far failing so many people um, who've fallen through the gaps including freelancers, self-employed, part-time workers, people who work irregular hours and were on temporary contracts 
And with so many people falling through the gaps during the pandemic and increasingly relying on support from food banks, charities and others, it's clear that our social security system does not work properly or effectively. If a universal basic income had been in place before coronavirus, it would have provided an automatic mechanism for delivering essential income top-ups for those families and individuals who really needed it. It's also true that a universal basic income would reduce and minimise the depth and severity of any recession experienced. And as we know, recessions impact on those on lower incomes much more significantly. Ensuring people have money to spend in the economy will be essential as we move through the next few difficult months and as we move towards recovery from the virus. And there is no doubt that the next few years will be challenging for our economy, but ensuring people have money to spend and are not living hand to mouth does not just benefit them, it benefits everyone. The knowledge of a secure income will also open up opportunities to those who may not currently be able to explore or consider careers or jobs they want. Unleashing and creating an environment in which Londoners can consider the best way they can contribute to the economy rather than being tied down due to economic pressure is something we should strive towards. It will make our city and our country a better, more equal and more productive place. To conclude, universal basic income is a sign of a mature society and one which understands that ensuring no one lives in poverty is a benefit to all, both in terms of social cohesion and economic prosperity. I hope all members will be able to support this important motion today. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. I have uh, one indication to speak, uh, and that is from Assembly Member Cooper. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, the Labour Group is very receptive to many of the arguments put forward in the motion and in the speeches that we've just heard from Assembly Member Berry and Assembly Member Pigeon, and um, as I think most members will know, in the middle of September, the mayor cautiously agreed um, that uh, UBI, Universal Basic Income, is worth exploring, uh, and we agree with that. Uh, we agree it's worth exploring, but that is not what this motion is proposing. It suggests that London local authorities should be a test pilot. Um, we have some big concerns about the idea of London local authorities who have been massively underfunded in their uh, response up until now, uh, dealing with uh, COVID-19, um, asking them to take <coughs> on trialling a new welfare system. 95% of the funding for local authorities comes from um, the government and only 5% comes from council tax. And they've been hugely underfunded for, for the last decade, let alone um, if, if they're going to get uh, any more than 75 pence in the pound back for the work that they've been doing to date in trying to, to help the poorest in our society who have been hit uh, the worst by the changes that um, have come in uh, as a result of coronavirus. So, um, you know, if you think about when the government introduced universal credit, what a huge mess that was. Is this really the time during the middle of a pandemic that we want to start testing further changes? We think not. We think the priority now is to target getting support to those who've been hit the hardest, to extend the temporary lifting in universal credit payments, to end the five-week wait for universal credit. We need to be providing hungry children with free school meals, uh, and not just during school term, but during school holidays as well. We're not living in normal circumstances. We're just about to see potentially a crash out Brexit. We don't feel that piloting these systems now during the largest public health crisis and a massive recession is the right time. But what we do want is that the Economy Committee, um, uh, you know, to do a proper exploration of this, we want to return to this debate in the future. But we will be voting against this uh, proposal today. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Are there any other speakers? Assemblymember Prince, might I have a hand raised, Chair? Sorry, who? Assemblymember Prince, Chair. Assemblymember Prince. Have you raised your hand? I have indeed, uh, Chair, yes. Well, please uh, do come in then. Thank you. Very kind of you. Uh, I just thought that uh, as this motion is being uh, seconded by... Uh, sorry, it's motion... I misread the motion, actually. It's Caroline Russell who seconded it, so I apologise. Um, I just thought that uh, we should have views from other parties uh, other than the Greens. So I thought... You might like the view of the um, of the Liberal Democrats on this. Um, uh, the former leader of the Liberal Democrat, 
uh, Vince Cable said in an article in The Independent, uh, said that um, he is against UBI, uh, claiming it requires unaffordable generosity and extreme levels of taxation and destroys the incentive to work. Unusually wise words from Vince Cable. Right. That point of information, Chair, as my part has been named, I, I did second the motion. Perhaps Assembly Member Prince had switched out of the meeting for a while. I, was second, I seconded the motion. Um, I can always um, send in the video clip so you can hear my speech you, on it. My party now is fully in favour of a universal thank you. basic you, income, as of our conference a few weeks ago. So thank you, you made your point. may not be, but so I'm, just, I'm, is, no, I, I'm not I, going to, I did, I did, you know, if I'm, I'm not going to allow any further debate. I'm reading. We uh, understand uh, where you all coming I'm from, so let, let's stop there. Uh, proposed Look, by Sean Berry and seconded by Caroline Russell. Well, points have been made from both sides. Let's just move on. Uh, <laughs> since there's no <laughs> any further <laughs> indication, can we please move on? Uh, and uh, if uh, Assembly Member Devnish wants to uh, sum up on this, please. Sorry, Assembly Member Sean Berry wants to sum up on this, please. I have nothing to say on the matter, Chair. <laughs> <laughs> Assembly Member Sean Berry. Um, I, I, would sum be, up. I would be delighted to sum up, but also um, I'm incredibly disappointed to see Labour not showing the leadership that we've asked for on this. Um, I'm referring it to the committee, as has been suggested, is, is not the leadership we need today. We explore it further by trialling it. We're asking for the most robust exploration you can get, which is a, a pilot within London. And if it would be so risky for local authorities, let me reiterate that councils across the country are crying out to be the pilots for this, with the support of the DWP and HMRC to make it work. These local authorities include Liverpool, Sheffield, Hull, Norwich, Leeds, Belfast, Newry, Moreland Down, Derryanshire Bay, Edinburgh, Fife, Glasgow, North Ayrshire, the Scottish Government and the Welsh Senate run by Labour have all said they want to trial a UBI as local and regional national authorities. Um, and can I remind you of the letter that I mentioned last week in which 520 local authority and a parliamentary representatives, part of the um, cross-party parliamentary and local government working group on UBI, which includes Labour MPs, all signed up to this last week. These are, you know, MPs from, from Labour. We've got Beth Winter MP, John McDonnell, Ian Byrne, Richard Bergen. In the Welsh Senate, we've got Mike Hedges. These are all Labour politicians that I'm reading out the names of here. Joyce Watson, um, Alan Davis, Dawn Burden, Mick Antonio, Jack Sargent, Hugh Aranka Davis, Jenny Rathbone, David Rees, Vicky Howells, Carwin Jones, Jane Bryant. These are all Welsh parliamentarians voting for this to happen in their area from Labour. And then in the Lords, we've got Baroness Lister, Baroness Kingsmill, Baroness Kennedy, Baroness Yeo, Baroness Andrews. These are Labour politicians who are fully in support of these pilots taking place in, in areas across the country because the benefits to people are absolutely huge. Um, I could go on and on and list all the Labour councillors who've signed up to this letter, but I'm aware that we are uh, uh, experiencing a very long meeting. So please, Labour members, think again, um, especially Murad Qureshi, who is on this list as well. Um, and please vote for this motion today. It's really, really important that, that we, we show leadership, that we think big, that these big ideas are trials to benefit our citizens in London, um, and that we ask for this today. Thank you. Right. I have uh, got uh, a comment from Assembly Member uh, Leonie Cooper who wishes to refer this uh, motion to committee. Can I have explanation from uh, 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 Clark Rebecca on uh, the, the rules, please, on this? Uh, yes. Can I just confirm, um, Assembly Member Cooper, are you formally moving that this be referred to committee? Um, I am, because I really do think this is such an important issue that it deserves uh, some proper consideration, not just in a very brief motion um, during the course of a, an assembly debate, 
but we really need to scrutinise this in detail. And to compare London to a random list of other much smaller places around the country, um, I, that you know, really, um, Assemblymember Berry, you're not doing London justice. We deserve to do this justice. We are the capital city of the country. We have a very large population, 32 London boroughs in the City of London. It would be very complex for us. We need to look into this in detail. Thank you. Right, thank you, Assemblymember. Um, just to explain what Standing Orders say, so under Standing Order 3.13, where the subject matter of a motion to the Assembly uh, comes within the terms of reference of a particular committee, then any member can propose that the Assembly, on a vote without discussion, refers that motion to the named committee, which I take to be the Economy Committee. Uh, I, I'm understanding that uh, Assemblymember Cooper has just done that. Uh, before it's taken to the vote, the, the proposer of the original motion shall have the right to make a statement of up to one minute in length as to why it should not be so referred, uh, which I take uh, Assemblymember Berry to have just done. Um, I, uh, after I'd which... I'd quite like to say a few more words, if that's... Possible. Well, you have a minute then. Over, over, to, the, over to the chair then, uh, after which the question shall be put to yeah. the vote. Yeah, so you have a minute, Assemblymember um, I, Berry. I, I wish, I wish to object to this. This does not happen um, with a lot of motions that we put forward. Um, this is an idea whose time has come. We should be showing leadership on this and voting for this now today. It asks for very simple things which do not bind the Assembly to um, any, any future um, spending or actions. And I think referring it to the committee is, is just a political cop-out when we could be showing leadership today. Right, thank you. We therefore now are moving to a vote on uh, uh, the, the, that uh, the motion uh, item is referred uh, to the Economic Committee. Uh, can we have the votes, please? Thank you, Chair. I shall call members uh, alphabetically uh, to indicate whether they are voting for, against or abstaining. Just to be clear, uh, members are voting on whether to refer this motion to the uh, Economy Committee. So uh, voting in favour means that uh, you are in favour of referring it to the Economy Committee. Uh, if, it is, if that is agreed, then it should be so referred. If uh, that is not agreed, then we go back to a vote on the substantive motion itself. Uh, so can I have Assemblymember Arnold, your vote, please? Yes, for good scrutiny. For, thank you, Assemblymember. Assemblymember Bailey? Assemblymember Bailey? Excuse me, for, for. Assemblymember Berry? Uh, against, and for leadership. Uh, Assemblymember Boff? For. Assemblymember Cooper? For. Assemblymember Desai? For. Assemblymember Devonish? For. Assemblymember Dismore? For. Assemblymember Duval? For. Assemblymember Gavron? For. Assemblymember Hall. <coughs> Assemblymember McCartney. Four. Assemblymember Moore. Four. Assemblymember O'Connell. Four. Assemblymember Pigeon. Against. Assemblymember Prince. Four. Assemblymember Qureshi. Assemblymember Qureshi. Move on. Uh, Assemblymember Russell. Assemblymember Against. Russell. Against. Thank you, Assemblymember. Uh, Assemblymember Dr. Sahota. Four. Assemblymember uh, Arbour, Deputy Chairman. Four. And Assemblymember Shah, Chair. Four. That is 17 votes in favour of referring the motion to the committee, Chair, and three votes against. Okay. Noted.